Hello everyone, this is Antonio speaking. Today we're going to talk about chirology, no, uh, palmistry. The hand, the lines in the hand, and the mystery that uh, surrounds this uh, uh, science that um, it's so intriguing and yet so wonderful when used with respect and responsibility, of course. Uh, I've got so many emails, I receive emails from them. I don't know, a little bit everywhere and um, people ask me uh, Antonio I have this line and uh, well there's a cross on this one and uh, what does this mean uh, of course I, I can't answer all those emails uh, I mean it's uh, uh, what would I say okay first of all I don't see the hand and is it really a cross or an overlap like 3d line see I don't know so I said, well, with all these emails and all this curiosity, which to me is wonderful, if you are curious, that means uh, there's an attraction there. So, hey, why not? I'm going to put uh, a video on YouTube and give a little uh, outlook overview of this wonderful science that still amazes me today. Well, as you know, and if you don't, the, the gypsies were the people that uh, transported this um, practice. I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't say science because they, I, I don't want to generalize, but they didn't transport it the, the most responsible way. Uh, actually, the, the, the majority of them thought that what's in your hand is going to happen and you have absolutely no control. And that is very wrong, very wrong. Um, lines change. And I came to the conclusion after 17 years of professional practice and see, I work in three languages, so I saw a lot of people. I came to the conclusion that lines are like rivers we travel. And it is the way we travel that makes the difference. Example, if you come and see me and you are 20 years old, example, and about 20 years old is here. So this would be like 40 and that's 60. And this is your lifeline. I'll get to it a little later. So you come to me and you're 20 and I see an island, for example that points out around, I'd say, 26 years of age, if I look at uh, what I just wrote. Now, an island it, it is not good news. It always talks about a division, problems. That's not um, an easy passage. Now, when I say holistic coaching, is that I go, I dig deep into the person by the way she thinks, the way she feels, the intentions that she has, and so on, it enables me to see why that is going to happen. Now, if I help the person change the attitude, change the thought, or change the idea of, what happens is that we start by, usually the line, the, the, the island opens and it may simply disappear. So what am I saying here? What I'm saying is that the future can be changed. The lines are conscious thought. You change the thought, you change the line. Uh, of course this was not taught in school and actually hidden from us centuries and centuries. Uh, not too long ago, if I was speaking this way, outside, I'd be probably burned or beheaded. Uh, but anyway, today that's not the case, especially in most countries. Um, we have the power to change our future. Uh, some people say, well, but Antonio, you're contradicting yourself. You say there's a destiny, that we all have a destiny. Well, we do have a destiny to experiment to travel, to acquire memories during the traveling 
or the journey? Yes, we do. But uh, see, I don't know where you live, but let's say over here, for example, there's many roads that lead to Ottawa. No, it's up to me which one I'm going to choose. Some of them are longer, more comfortable, others are not. So what I'm saying here is that, yes, you have a destiny that is traced by your own self, or, or should I say your higher self. But the options, how you're going to travel that, uh, that destiny, that journey, comes up to you. Or it's all up to you. I mean, you change and the world changes. This has been oversaid. Perhaps it became a cliche. But it's true. I use it and it works for me. If it works for me, it should work for you. So, what I'm trying to, 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 to pass on to you is that if it's in the future, it will, well, it could be changed. I, I could repair a damaged line and I could also damage a good line. But it's always the conscious thought, the way I deal with life, the way I walk life, the way I travel life. Okay, so please keep this in mind. The future is in your hands. You can change it. You change your behavior, change your attitude. You begin to use the intelligence of the heart and you will have a wonderful life. Okay, all right. So back to the gypsies. The gypsies didn't, didn't know this as, as a science. So they, they kind of thought that lines were static. And a lot of people may still think that, but it's not. And the other thing is the misinterpretation of certain lines. Example, there was a line, or there's a line, doesn't mean you have it, that starts here and goes this way, for example. And they call this the poison line. You're going to die. Well, you see, the information is not totally wrong, it can get you killed. Example, not too long ago, I think maybe three weeks ago, somebody went to a restaurant and asked for a beef tartare. And the waiter brought him salmon tartare. And he was severely allergic to salmon. Well, uh, he almost died. They took him to the hospital. Now, this is an allergy line. If you're, all, if you're allergic to seafood or to a, a bee sting, that doesn't mean you're going to die. If you're aware, there's ways, there's medication to get out of it. So, this is an allergy line, okay? The other thing that uh, a lot of people seem to be concerned about is... A lifeline. Oh, I have a short lifeline. So I'm going to live a short life. Okay. Now, the, the, the line of life tells you the quality of life, the way you live your life, and how much you are in life. Example, if the line is long, deep, and reddish, that means you are attached to life. You know, the, the social, the family, the life itself, you're like you bite into life. If the line is very, very shallow, thin, and may even like kind of disappear halfway or three quarters of the way, what's tell, what that tells me is that the person is more celestial than terrestrial. So you won't find this person in, uh, in crowds or like having barbecues. No, um, it is a person that loves to, to, to study, to read, to meditate, take walks, very connected to the celestial world. And the other thing is, if I have a strong, deep lifeline, 
that means that I can eat mostly everything and I digest everything. If I have a thin line, if I have, for example, fast food, um, I will feel it. I will very much feel it. Like if I eat at lunchtime, I can even have supper that day. Okay? Uh, it is a more fragile, but yet a more intuitive and channel person. Um, example, I can show you like my lifeline. You don't see much of a big lifeline here. But I don't. I really don't. And if you ask me, okay, Antonio, so why? Well, honestly, I... Yes, I work with the public, I give talks, I give courses, I give conferences, I meet people everywhere, but then I go into my cocoon, to my cave. I like to be with myself, I like to meditate, I like to contemplate, I like to take walks, I like to go play golf at the end of the day so that I'm alone. You see, yes, I am more celestial than I am terrestrial now, but my life, my lifeline was... Uh, if I go back, it was deep. I was involved in sports, uh, soccer, and karate, and so on. But we change. So, the long or short lifeline doesn't mean the length of life. So, please forget that. Example, <clears throat> so that's the lifeline. That's the way you live, the quality of your life. This is your headline. That's the way you think. That's your intellect. That's your mental. Now, let's say the line is short. You know, I, I get these emails, people asking me, okay, so in my life, my, my headline is short. I'm not a very intelligent person. And I laugh. Well, you see, if the line, the, the, the headline is short, that means your, your thoughts are quick. Of course, if your thought is quick, uh, there's not much reflection there. So this is where the coach comes into effect or comes into play. You need to be careful with the decisions you make because you tend to make decisions too fast. Well, yeah, sometimes we dare and we win. But that is sometimes, not most of the times, okay? And if the, line, the, the headline, <clears throat> excuse me, if the headline is long, so then what we have is somebody that thinks, reflects, analyzes before it makes a decision. It's like a bullet. If your pistol has a long, a long tube, when the bullet comes out, I mean, it takes longer to come out, but it goes further and straighter. If it's, a sh if it's short, it comes out faster, but it also loses its precision faster. Okay? So, we have the heart line. Sometimes, or the majority of times, goes up to between Jupiter and Saturn, or even to Jupiter or Saturn, it goes up. When it goes up, it shows um, it shows openness, passion. I am open to receive. I'm passionate about what I do. It's always a good sign. But sometimes we have a line that goes down. It goes down. So that means that I close myself up. I don't trust. I'm suspicious and also a little jealous or envy if somebody is better than me. Why did he get the same salary as me if he just started two months ago? Things like that. Um, now, the heart line tells us the kind of emotions we have, how we love, how strong is our love and so on. Now, the way I live, the way I think, and the way I feel my emotions. Lifeline, headline, 
and heart line. And then we have the fate line or the Saturn line that has to do with uh, social morals, has to do with um, the inner self, has to do with occupation. And when I say the social morals is what do I bring to society? What is my sharing? or my participation. See, not everybody has a Saturn line. The majority of us do. Now, it is possible to have two lifelines. It is possible to have two headlines. Or one headline and then a half a, half a headline which is my case in this hand, as you can see. It is possible to have two heart lines or another one here that sometimes can be called the grid of, the grid of uh, Venus. But it does, have to, to, it, it does have to do with the heart, the way you love. Um, yes, this would be half of the grid of Venus, which means the person is uh, passionate and uh, and very romantic and uh, you know needs that kind of stimulation. But anyway, when we talk about the fake line, the Saturn line, especially today with a new generation, you may find many in one hand. So you could find one that comes from Earth. I call it myself Earth. It comes from here, or the unconscious. Uh, area, but it could also, also come from the moon, all the way up, but it could also come from inside of the Mount of Venus, or from the lifeline. Now your question would be, okay, Antonio, how do I know that that's a Saturn line? Well, actually, it's very simple. Any line that goes to the base of a finger becomes that information. Example, this is Jupiter. This is Saturn. This is, uh, some people call it Apollo or the Sun. And this is Mercury. Now this is my leadership, my ego, my self-confidence. If a line goes towards Jupiter, it's telling me that I like to lead and direct, and I'm a fine leader. One that stands by his decisions, is capable of, even against all odds. If any line goes towards Saturn, then it becomes an occupation, an interest in society, to build, to produce, to be a part of. Understand? And then we have the sun. Now, the sun finger stands for happiness, stands for success, an image. So, any line that goes towards the sun finger becomes a sun line. And then we have Mercury. If the line goes towards Mercury, it becomes the Mercury line. However, this specific finger uh, has two lines that are not the same. Now, if a line comes from the lifeline, or from here, or whatever, all the way up to Mercury, so that is a Mercury line. And a Mercury line, um, you need to be very careful how you read this. Because if it's whole, deep, and solid, straight, it speaks of status. Someone likes to be known for what he does, and will probably be very well known. It doesn't, it doesn't go unnoticed. But if the Mercury line is like fragmented, it becomes the nervous line. Well, if it's whole, it still is the nervous line. 
has to do with the nervous system, but it's telling me that the person has a good balance in his, hers, nervous system. If it's fragmented, then it becomes a, a, a serious warning of health. It tells you that your nervous system is not, or, or, or should I say, is fragile. Example, a woman that has a fragmented mercury line has problems with uh, menstruation, for example. But that's not all. Um, the nervous system is like the electricity in your house. If it's not calibrated or regulated, the appliances will not work well. So, example, I do have a serious fragmented mercury line, but I know. So, if I eat strong foods, sugar, fat, or junk food, trust me, I will feel it. It doesn't go through. It stays. And so I know. And the other thing about it is that I because of a fragmented mercury line, am a very nervous person on the inside. So by knowing that, I have to find ways to calm myself. Example for me, go for a walk alone is wonderful. You see, when we know, we can change the quality of, your, of our lives, okay? Um, when I said that there are two names, for the line of Mercury, or should I say the lines that are in direction to Mercury, is that we may find a line that is an arc, like this. Well, it still goes towards Mercury, but it's no longer a Mercury line. Now, this is called an intuition line. Anyone who has this line, especially solid, just like I wrote, uh, has an incredible intuition. It's all he, 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 she is always ahead of her time. Yes, you can be a medium, an incredible psychic, but not necessarily. You can be, example, in the stock market, Wall Street. It's intuition. And when I see somebody with this line, I always tell the person, you have to Trust that voice that speaks inside of you and follow what it says. You will never go wrong. So you see the difference? There's an arc and there's a straight line. So that's Mercury. That's the intuition line. This is the allergy line. This is a fate line, Saturn line. This would be another fate line or Saturn line that starts in the moon. Now we have, the moon is quite big. This is the moon. This will be Mars. This is Mercury. I'm talking about the mounts or the areas, okay? And this is the sun. This is Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, and Venus, and Mars. Okay, there are three the plane of Mars. Uh, some chirologists say that this is Mars positive and that's Mars negative. Others say the opposite, but that doesn't really matter. What matters is this has to do with the, the area of the head, the mental, and this, the physical. And this is neutral. Now, I don't advise you to go study the, the mounds because it's way too complicated and too complex for what it gives you. But it is important for you to know what they mean. Why? Well, there are lines that I call the rebel lines. They appear and they disappear. And if you don't know what that area, that, that field of play means, you will not be able to read the message that that line is transmitting. So that's what I mean by it is important to know what the mounts mean. Example, 
the Mount of Jupiter has to do with leadership, but also honor, okay, and justice. Just to give you an idea, okay? Of course, like I said, and I repeat, I'm not giving you a course in chirology, but I want you to at least know that your hand holds more information than you actually thought, okay? Now, there's the sun line. Anything that goes to the sun, so I'm going to erase this. You can always go back to the video and see it. Now, this is the sun. This is the sun line. Or should I say, this would be a sun line. But the sun line could also come from Mars. Or it could even come from inside the Mount of Venus. Or deep in the hand. Now, these lines, a lot of people don't have it. But those who have, they experience what we call success. And this is why a lot of chirologists call it the line of success. I've had the privilege to meet a lot of people and uh, I'll never forget some I met in Singapore when I went to work there and um, they had uh, what you classify as high salaries. Uh, money was not an issue and I didn't see any sunlight. Interesting. So to a lot of people this is success, but to them it doesn't feel like success. So through the years I study and study and study and I came to the conclusion that real success is indeed money. Money. But also love and sun in your life. Okay, if you have money, the quantity doesn't matter as long as it's enough for you. If you have love in your life, if you feel love, you're surrounded by love. That's the way you look at a plant or an animal. And there's some, like there's, you, you're able to smile, to whistle, to, you enjoy life. Or enjoy the moment. So then you have some lines. You see, success, I mean, uh, money without love and happiness, what kind of success is that? Or, um, I have love, but I have no money and I have no happiness. Well, that's kind of strange. Or I have Happiness, I'm a happy, happy person, but I have no love and I have no money. Uh, I think there's a screw loose somewhere. <laughs> okay, so it, it is a combination of things. And this is why success is very relative. Okay? So any line that goes towards the sun becomes a sun line. But they mean different things. Or they have an interpretation that is somewhat different. Example, this line that comes from the Venus Mount from inside the lifeline. That means that the family, your family, is involved in your happiness, in your finances, somewhat involved. <clears throat> if the line comes from deep in the palm, I call it the unconscious uh, zone, that means that you have all this. You do, but you have to work for it. You have to do the work for it. You have, you have to go out there and do it, what, what you need to do. When it comes from Mars or the Moon and it arcs up, well, the gypsies used to call this the luck line. <gasps> you're going to be lucky and you're going to have money. Well, in a way, it appears to be so. But then when you analyze, is really, is, is there such a thing as luck? No. Everything is interconnected somehow. 
I call this a karmic line. But we need to understand what karma means. A lot of people say, oh my God, karma is so bad. Karma is your account book. Without karma, you, have, you would have no clue what you've done and where you're going. You're completely lost. It's like you're reading chapters at random. No. It's, the chapters are all connected. So, if you're getting money from somebody, or the universe is sending you money through a lottery or whatever, that means that it owes you. That's what karma means. Action, reaction, cause and effect. If I take from you, I create a karma. If I give you too much, I create a karma. Because then I have to come back and collect it. Or I have to come back and pay it. So in this specific case, that means that you worked, you served, or anything in that context, and you weren't paid for it. You came into this life to be paid. And that brings the frequency to zero. I owe you nothing, you owe me nothing. And that's the way out of here. Now, of course, there's many, many lines. I'm going to try to give you, see, this one here, an example, would be the ring of family. Oftentimes it has islands, which means we have karmic issues with our family. This would be coming from the Mount of Venus out into nowhere, like the, uh, this zone, not particularly going to any finger. This means that you are generous. You give. You share. It's important to you. Of course, there's a warning about this, too. Are you giving too much? Are you creating a karma that you don't necessarily want? Because when you give, when you're generous, you need to do that in, in respect and responsibility. If you keep giving fish to the person, you, what you're going to do is you're going to create a dependency. The person will never know or learn how to fish. So we need to be careful here. Then there's the lines of luxury. This is someone who likes the beautiful things of life. Nice house, nice car, and so on. Uh, what I was saying earlier, you see, a lot of people think this is a cross and that's a cross. Oh, there's a cross here, there's a cross here. See, when a cross shows up, and uh, hopefully it doesn't because it's not a good sign, it shows up very, very well designed this way. When we look at these lines, okay, they're overlap or 3D. What you see is, example, if I put this this way, you think it's a cross. But you, when you look at it this way, it's no longer a cross. Now, what I'm saying is that the lines have their own path to travel and not necessarily touching each other. So that's not a cross. That would be a cross. In in a specific point in a line, which is alert. Now, crosses come and go, but that's another thing. I mean, that would be part of a course. So, no, that's not a cross. Uh, there are rassets or the bracelets. In the ancient times, they used to attribute 25 to 30 years each one. So, if I had three very, very well designed, uh, I would like to live maybe 90 years, a long life, where no evidence supports that. So, we don't read it that way. However, when they show, like many examples in my case, as you can see, if you can see, I have quite a few. What this, okay, it doesn't necessarily mean 25 years or 30 years each, but it does have a very positive, positive connotation, information. Especially in, you know, the endurance, energy, in life. Okay? It's always a good sign. Let's give it a, a leave it at that. Now, sometimes 
we have this line. Obviously, not many people have it, but those who have, see, example, the first one going up. Infertility. Somebody who is who's unable to have children in you know the easy or natural way infertility is a fact here so this is 100% anybody who has this uh, sign uh, has that you know situation then we have the ring of Solomon we see a lot of these ring of Solomon you know the story, remember the story of the King Solomon? The justice. So anyone who has a beautiful ring of Solomon is a very just person. What's mine is mine, what's yours is yours. You leave me your wallet, I take care of it with my life, and then I give it back when you come back. Um, of course, I often tell my clients that uh, it is a positive and very good sign, but it, there's a, a downside to it. And the downside to this is you tend to believe that people are all like that. Well, I go back to bed because people are not all like that. Okay, so don't go too much into expectation. Sometimes we have the grid of Venus. Yes. It, there's um, the negative and positive reading to this. The positive is that this, this, this person is highly romantic, feeling oriented, very creative, uh, loves uh, stimulation and so on and so forth. The negative side to this is that uh, people, the person can be too much in fantasy. And uh, example in love making, they can be very creative love making, but they expect that from the other one too. And uh, uh, not as often, but when they do it, it has to last four or five hours, and that in itself can be a problem. So it's like you expect too much from the other. So you are too much in fantasy island. Okay. So anyway, the 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 most. Um, or the majority of grid of um, Venus we see is half but yeah in cases sometimes it's like fragmented and fragmented is not always a good sign it kind of goes more to the negative than the positive you know like I, what I just said well uh, they even it's even more okay uh, I designed one two three one two three as you can see for lunch this stands for physical, this stands for mental, and this stands for spiritual, okay? Uh, if you see somebody with the first phalange, like thick, fat, well, that person likes the good things of life, eating a lot and, you know, that, that stimulation of, uh, you know, even sexuality. Uh, gluttony, depending on how thick it is. What is important is to keep it at 33.3, 33.3 and 33.3%. If this, the top one, which is spirituality, is longer than the two on the bottom, what we have here is that the person is way too spiritual. And if you are way too spiritual, you may be no earthly good. So you, you see, you only have 100%. If, if you put 60% on your spirituality, the other two bodies are going to suffer. Get it? So it is important that we have a balance, and that's why I call it the 33.3%. You know that uh, the Venus finger, the, the, the thumb, only has two. This is the physical, our physical. Okay? It's uh, most curologists call it logic and will i like to call it intention and action uh, the best way to to analyze is you close your 
thumb and go like this, okay? So this gives you the size of the top flange. And then go to the joint. Oh, in my case, it's kind of balanced. It's actually very balanced. So my intentions, my design, what I design, what I intend, I do. I move into action, okay? Um, a great majority of people have a longer uh, intention or logic flange and the shorter will or action. So many of their thoughts, many of their ideas, projects and uh, intentions stay just at that. They don't see the light of day. So as you can see, you get all the information. Um, you get a lot of information. It's just crazy. I mean, I'm just giving you a little bit. Then we have the famous union line or the marriage line, which is on the side. Yeah. Now, I have to talk a little bit about this one because uh, I do get a lot of requests on that, on this one. I'm going to have to erase this here. Um, if you have a solid one, this tells us that you will have a strong relationship or you are the marriage type. Even if you have three marriages, that doesn't mean you have a, you can have three three lines. You are the marriage type. Every 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 person you were with was the person. Okay. Um, let's say I have this now. It, it could tell us that the person likes to flirt or has, you know, like uh, lovers or... Uh, it could. But if you look at the heart line being solid, straight, with passion, and then there's a line over here. A line over here, which... Like I have, but I don't know if you see, probably see, you see a line here. Now, this is the um, loyalty line. So you're loyal. When this line shows, you're loyal. And let me tell you a little bit about loyal. Loyal to your radio station, loyal to your partner, loyal to your job, loyal to your loyal, period. You don't go change things. Now, I have a loyal line and I have several union lines. Now, let, let's put aside the word union or marriage and let's call them affection. Lines of affection. Yes, I am married. But I have one, two, three. It doesn't necessarily mean just three. Oftentimes it does. Strong friends. People I trust with my life. People who are a part of my work, of my walk. They show up in your hand. So this is affection lines. And not necessarily union or marriage lines. Okay? Of course, there's a lot to it, like separation, divorces, and and infidelity, and all of that. But of course, I'm not going to give you a course on this line. And some people say, okay, Tony, but I thought that was children lines. No, no, no. Children lines are very thin on top, okay, on top. But the children lines are not accurate. So, if they show in one's hand, See, I'd say 75% it's accurate, but not 100%. What that tells me is that the person has a certain chemistry with children. Because, you know, it could speak of... Uh, again, this is, these are lines that you really need experience to read. First, you need to find them and really let them speak to you. That is the intuition part, the, the intuitive part of this study. But anyway... Um, 
example, I had a lady once that came to me and she had so many children lines, like so many. Okay, you're not going to tell me that this person has all these children. What do you do? Well, I work in a daycare. It's been 10 years. Well, she's very good with children. And it appears in your hand, okay? And what else can I show you? Well, there's the uh, traveling lines, which I don't call traveling. I call it the curiosity lines. So when you have these lines, or you are curious, you like to know things, you like to discover, and obviously you like to travel. Uh, the quadrangle is the heart line and the head line. That's the, the, that's the result of these two lines. Uh, lines over here, for example, especially if there's, there's more than one, these are warning lines. That means that your health is fragile. So you need to consult a doctor. You need to find out more about yourself and your health and especially about your weaknesses. Because once you know them, then you can act upon them, okay? Um, well, uh, to end this little presentation, let's go to the nails which speak a lot. Example, if I have a short nail, this means that I have a short fuse. That doesn't mean I'm a bad person. No, no. I have a short fuse. If you bother me, if you um, do something wrong to me, I may snap. Okay? Snap. If you have a long and sometimes even longer means you're calm. You're much calmer then. Okay, so this there's a there's a huge reading in the nails. And if it shows example the half moons, that's a very good sign. Very good sign. The energy is flowing. Okay. Alright, so this is your physical Venus. How strong you are, how determined you are, uh, and so on. This is your, I, I told you before, your leadership, your self-confidence. This is your spiritual side, your inner side, but also the social um, values. This is the sun. You see, this is the image as a leader, confident, and so on. The sun... Uh, could take the place of Jupiter if he's short. But it will give a false image. Like, you, you hide your fears behind the sun. It is said that Napoleon had a very, very short Jupiter finger. And that's why he was. See, he acted not in bravery, but in lack of confidence. Anyway, as you can see, there's a lot to this. And this is Mercury. It's the social status. The social status, you know? Remember the social status. Also the communication, how you communicate. It's very, very connected or linked to your throat, the way you communicate. If it's short, like short way below the last phalange, you're timid. And yes, you can have throat problems, including thyroid and, and so on. Uh, usually connected to your childhood. Example, I was very timid. And this is my passive and this is my active. Because I'm right-handed, it becomes my active. This is my future and present. This is my passive, the past and what could be. When I take my past and put it together with my future, in terms of communication, when I unite my heart lines and I put them up, look at the difference. This one became thicker and longer. You see, before uh, even shooting a video like this, I, uh, I'll be shaking or speaking in front of a crowd. Today, I am very, very comfortable. Actually, I am more than comfortable. I'm passionate about it. Okay, so yes, you can change even the size of your fingers. It, it, it's incredible. Anyway, 
that's what I wanted to share with you today. It, there's a lot more to your hand than you probably thought. There's more to it than meets the eye. And um, I hope you enjoy it. This is Antonio speaking. Thank you very much for listening to my words. So long.